Our last video introduced a tier list for all the professional models currently in production by Rolex. But because there were more watches than we could cover in one go, and because the final view would have included way too many watches on the tier list, we decided to break it up to make it easier to digest. And in fact, the natural divisions seem to be around those professional watches related to the air or land, and those related to the sea. We've covered the GMT Master II, the Explorer, and more in the first part. And in this video, we'll cover your subs, sea dwellers, and yacht masters for which we have market data. Just to recap, this is what the tier list looked like at the end of part one. And we only had GMT Master 2s, or discontinued, Daytonas in the S tier. Let's see if any of the watches today break into that top tier of value retention. I'll include a snapshot of the full tier list for those that are interested in checking it out. Let me know in the comments if you think I didn't need to worry about putting all the watches in one view, and if this could have been just one video. As always, you're welcome to check out the data on these watches and more for yourself at watcharts.com. As before, we'll go in alphabetical order, and that means starting with the Sea Dweller family. In this instance, the first watch we're looking at is the reference 126600, which retails for $13,250, trades for $13,300, which basically means the value retention is flat, which puts it in the B tier. The two-tone version of this watch, reference 126603, retails for $18,000 and trades for $16,300, which is actually 9% below retail, which also puts it in the B tier, but also into negative value retention territory. One of the few watches that we will see across this entire list that sit in that category. Looking next at the Sea Dweller Deep Sea, the reference 136660, there are two variations, one with the blue gradient dial and the other with the black dial. These retail for 14,460 and 14,150 respectively. The blue dial trades for $16,800, which is 16% 16 above retail. That's good enough to land it in the A tier. And the black dial, which trades for 15,400, ends up in the B tier. And then the last one, which is a Sea Dweller Deep Sea Challenge, reference 126067, retails for 25950 and trades on the secondary market today for 33700 which is 30% above retail, which is good enough for the A tier. If you're eagle-eyed, you may notice that this is the only watch on the list that, even though it looks like steel, is actually because it's slightly darker, and also because we know otherwise, is made out of titanium. That leads us into the Submariner family directly. And so we'll start off with the first three steel subs, the no date, the date version, and then the one with the green bezel. And so the first one, the 124060, retails for 9,100, trades for 12,000, which is 32% above retail, putting it in the eight here. The date version, the 126610LN with the black bezel, retails for 10,250, trades for 13,700, which is 34% above retail again in the A tier. The next one, which is the 126610LV, which retails for 10,800, trades for 16,300, giving it a value retention of plus 51%, landing it in the S tier. Staying within the Submariner family, the next two are the two-tone versions, the 126613LB and 126613LN. These both retail for 15,600 and trade for 17,200 and $16,200 respectively. Those are value retentions of 10% and 4% above retail, putting these watches collectively in the B tier. Now we move into our precious metal Submariners. The first one, the 126619LB retails for 42,000. It's actually the most expensive of the precious metal and therefore of all of the Submariner uh, references that are in current production and trades at a slight discount, $39,400, which is 6% below retail uh, on the secondary market today. The yellow gold versions, the 126618LB and LN, retail for $39,000, and they both trade right around that mark. The blue dial just 1% above retail, and the black dial actually 2% below retail. And so these watches are essentially flat against their retail prices. 
it's remarkable to pause here for a second and ponder the fact that the steel variations of the Submariner, all three of them have better value retention than their two-tone and precious metal counterparts. It just goes to show you that the relative desirability of each of these variations is reflected in uh, the value retention, which indirectly gives you an indication of the demand for these watches relative to their supply. And now we're left with just the Yacht Masters at 37, at 40, at 42 millimeters, and then lastly, the Yacht Master 2. And this again is gonna be a bit of a rapid round, so bear with us as we run through this list. Staying at the 37 millimeter size first, the 268655 retails for 24,700 and trades a little bit below that on the secondary market at 22,300. That's 10% below retail, which for the precious metal watch and actually for any watch on the professional model list is the worst, the single worst value retention figure. But the steel version of this watch, the reference 268 622, which retails for 11550 trades on the secondary market for $11,500, which is basically flat. And the two-tone versions of the Yachtmaster 37, reference 268621, which both retail for 14350 actually trade at markedly different values. The brown dial trades 8% above retail. Uh, against the $14,350 retail price, it trades at $15,500. And the black dial version trades at 14,100, which is just 2% below retail. Moving up to the 40 millimeter size, again, the rose gold version, 126655 will go first, retails for 28,800 and goes for 29,200, which again is essentially flat, but that's 1% above retail. The steel version of this, the steel versions of this watch come in two dial variations, the slate and then also a blue with a very striking red second hand. These two, the reference 126622, retail for $12,300 and trade for $14,700 and $14,100 respectively, which is 20% and 15% above retail respectively. And then the two-tone reference 126621, which retails for $15,850, trades for the brown dial 3% above retail and for the black dial 4% below retail. The retail price in this case is $15,850 and the brown dial trades at $16,400 and the black dial trades at $15,200. Next up are the two Yachtmaster 2s, both in precious metals, uh, the white gold and the yellow gold, both with the plain black dials. These are the references 226659 and 226658. They retail for $30,500 and $29,000 respectively, and they both trade essentially around those prices at $30,700, which is 1% above retail for the white gold version, and $31,600, which is 9% above retail for the yellow gold version. And last, but hopefully not for some people least, the Yachtmaster 2, reference 116680, 6681, and 6688 in steel, two-tone, and full yellow gold. These watches retail for $18,700, $25,400, and $43,500 respectively, and they trade basically at 0%, 4%, and 1% above retail respectively, which lands all of them in the B tier. Now that we have the final view for this subset of the professional watches um, it completed, what's interesting to see is that once again in the S tier and the A tier, the only watches that uh, appear are non-precious metal. So two-tone and precious metal watches do not seem to be gaining value here. The steel versions for the Submariner, for the Sea Dweller in two variations, and then the Yacht Master in 40 millimeters, but not 37 millimeters, in both dial variations, all end up in the A tier and the S tier. And before we go, here's how the list would have grown in the same view. Hopefully you found this content interesting, and if there's other collections of watches for which you would like us to repeat this exercise or try some different format entirely, let us know in the comments again. Thanks for listening.